Hi, my name is Scott Naismith, I'm a landscape painter and this uh, video is about plein air painting. I'm in the studio for part one to just show you how I would prepare for such a trip. Uh, the, the trip in part two is going to be the Coal Peninsula where I was staying at Colfinnan House which is halfway down on the west coast of a peninsula that comes out of the west coast of Scotland. So I'm going to be working acrylic, half due to the conditions, this was a winter trip uh, and I thought acrylics was just going to be a bit easier. If you're working in oils I've got a good tip for how you can keep those things uh, from getting damaged when they're still wet. Um, okay acrylic on board I get some of this stuff from my framer and uh, framers cut out the middle part of mount board and uh, a lot of the time we'll be wasting a lot of uh, smaller pieces so a good tip is get along to your framers and, and see if you can give you a deal on, on small piece of, pieces of mount board Acid free mount board, it's not going to yellow. Um, if you're going to coat this on the back, it's going to prevent the warping a little bit. Uh, so a lot of these will be, uh, uh, this one hasn't been, so you'll see a little bit of, uh, a little bit of warping there. But what I like to do with the, with the mount board is prepare it uh, with a little bit of colour, uh, or prepare some of them with a little bit of colour, and, uh, and give myself a good, uh, a good range of of different different colours to work with, and also different different textures. And to prepare that surface, I've actually used a little bit of acrylic matte medium, uh, which is from Golden. And I've got different sizes as well, and some of them uh, have a little bit of texture in them. Uh, others are flatter. Some cool, some warm. I tend to like to work in a cool background if the initial colours that I want to use are going to be warm and a warm background if the initial colours I want to put on are going to be cool. Um, but I don't stick to those rules. That is a generalisation, yes. In part two you're going to see this piece being painted start to finish. And uh, this is done just at uh, the bottom of the peninsula where there's a sort of back to back uh, shore there and you can see the Isle of Arran from the uh, southern point of the peninsula. This was actually done without any colour applied at the start just on a straight white canvas, a uh, straight white board even. And some of these other studies were done as well on my stay. And, and if they're a little bit smaller I got a little bit of tape that's been folded over uh, so that it can be attached to a board which then goes on the easel. So I would attach that stickiness to the board like so. And it allows you to be able to work right to the edges and not worry about the, uh, the, the rigidness of the support. Okay, before I get into the uh, pochade box that I'm going to show you, I just want to talk about when I'm working with acrylics, you might see in the video, I'm not sure, uh, of me using a little uh, bowl. That's not because I'm using oils, that's because I'm using a little bit of uh, matte medium sometimes and flow medium. Uh, so cleaning the brushes just in water and then dipping in here to, to get a little bit of matte medium uh, and also flow medium. That's a mixture of the two. Brushes I just keep in a case like that. So I can use my brushes in that case. Nice and portable, stick them in when you're finished and stick them in a bag. Okay, so let's just have a look inside the box itself. Uh, little clips here, so you would just open it up and fasten it up here. Gets a little bit tricky to uh, fasten these when you're out in the uh, absolute freezing cold and your fingers are barely working. Um, so inside the box we have a palette and some paints. So let's just have a look at how this is set out. In one compartment I have yellow paints, cyan paints and magenta paints, yes, and then black and white and some other various little colours there. Now that's a generalisation, uh, but let's just go through some of the paints that I've got in the uh, magenta, which is a uh, golden medium magenta, 
I've got quinacridone magenta, quinacridone red, permanent violet dark. This is another uh, quinacridone magenta again. And uh, perulo red, which I got as a little uh, sample. Um, cerulean bl blue chromium, uh, which I use as a dark cyan. Uh, sorry, a light cyan. Um, primary cyan, which is a little bit more transparent and a little bit darker. Uh, and I have a couple of blues here as well which I use to, I do mix blues with magenta and cyan, but uh, I do also have uh, Prussian blue and uh, anthraquinone blue, which is quite an intense one. A uh, halo blue. For thalo blue, uh, just think dark cyan. And I've got uh, a sort of darker yellow and a lighter yellow, a primary yellow and uh, cadmium yellow dark so um, I also have uh, yellow ochre which is for in there transparent orange it's quite nice to have a nice transparent orange for warm glazes and I've also got some samples of some nice uh, Windsor Newton artist acrylics uh, azo yellow which acts as a nice primary for that Mars black I carry and I also carry some titanium white from uh, Liquitex. And I also have a green, which is a thalo green, in the box as well. Now when you see the following video, you will notice how I set out the palette. And I actually set it out only using some of these paints. Uh, the palette that I will set out on the video on my plein air painting will be a CMY palette um, which is uh, basically using light magenta and dark magenta so uh, medium magenta and also quinacridone magenta so that there's a light and a dark there's also a difference in transparency in those two The two cyans that I would use in the video are primary cyan, which is over here, a darker one. And cerulean blue, which is the lighter one, which is cyan, not blue. And uh, the yellows would be can't quite remember, but I think I used the Azo yellow. So the lighter yellow would be the Azo yellow. And the darker yellow, the uh, cadmium yellow dark. Which is a little bit, it's just to get an opacity and a depth sometimes. And I also include some, uh, at the side I have I'm quite sure I do. Uh, some of this transparent orange. Also, have these two here. Permanent violet dark. Should be a transparent colour. And thraquinone blue. Um, plenty of white and plenty of black. Well, not plenty of black, but certainly a touch of black. And plenty of white. Off now have a couple of uh, blotches of white there trying to keep them clean. I'm just going to use a palette knife to just give you an idea of how these things mix. It's really the importance of, of these three and these three working together. These would just add intensity at various places that I would need it. Um, but just to give you an idea of the kind of bright greens that are uh, possible with the uh, cyan and yellow if that green needs brightened just more yellow would be used so 
So that would go in there. And then we can have a look at how we could uh, process a kind of blue into here. It's more of an indigo at the moment. And over here, I'm going to have a look at the blue created with the darker colours. And an orange would consist of these colours here. Or red. Okay, so all this colour just from these three mixes of paint here. Now just watch when I take this orange and mix it with this green here. And we're going to end up with an interesting colour. An interesting brown tertiary colour. Now without any tertiary colours on the palette, I now have this real earthy brown colour. I can intensify the brown Warm it up with the magenta, which is already a part of the brown, and I can sort of cool it down with the green. I can also add cyan to cool it down, and I can create a string of colour using the mixes rather than separate amounts of paint. Okay, in some of my previous videos I talk about how uh, how I like to, to keep one colour relating to another. Uh, so this palette that I take out in my plein air painting um, is limited to, to, to CMY, but uh, what I've done here is just show you the the diversity of colour that you can get from that palette. Now to manipulate tertiary colour with bright colour is really easy now because we can just we can cool it down with a bit of blue and we can end up with a string of colour which relates to our initial colour can be begin to add more magenta to warm it we can add some yellow to brighten it And all of this without actually using any titanium white at all. A little more yellow still. And then we'll green it out with Now we've got that nice sap tertiary green colour there. We can now lighten it with the titanium. And we have this string of tertiary colour 
created from the brighter primaries. Now the important thing about that is that this light tertiary colour is immediately related to that darker one which is related to your more saturated colours in the painting. All this, and I've barely touched titanium white or my extra colours, a lot of these are then used to intensify what you want to do with say the blues. Um, if you were then to blue out Cool down your light green. And you felt like you wanted a more intense blue. This anathrotone. That blue would just intensify it. Well, I hope you found the tutorial a little bit helpful and uh, I'll be taking this palette and box out to the uh, field in part two. Uh, so stay tuned for that. You can follow me on Twitter or Facebook and please subscribe to the channel. I did promise a wee tip for oil paintings which are not dry yet when you're out in the field. And one of these little things which is uh, drawers. Uh, that you can keep your uh, your paintings and just secure the paintings to the bottoms of the drawers uh, Keep it in the car and then when you get back to the car with a wet painting you can just give the painting its own drawer Okay, see you in part two. Thank you